I know I skipped last week. Uh, my apologies. That was because of the fact that we had an in-person meeting for Writers Club, and so as a result, uh, um, timing just didn't work out with me being able to film something beforehand. All right, so today we're going to be talking about word limits, and the reason why is because we actually have a contest coming up again. We have a cozy mystery contest for teens and adults um, that will be going on throughout December. The entries will be due at the end of the month, um, December 30th specifically, because we will be closed on the 31st. Um, but it will be due on December 30th before 5.45 p.m. because obviously can't do that. <laughs> um, if we're already closed, you can't turn it in. Hold on one second. Let me make sure that I got right the right date. Anyway, it is about cozy mystery. I'll explain more about the prompt while we're, I'm looking it up. It is a cozy mystery prompt. So what that means is that you're going to is that you're going to want to make sure that it is in the cozy mystery genre. Um, specifically, what we're going to do, yes, it is the 30th, <laughs> what we're going to want you to do is to write a cozy mystery set in a um, small town and takes place in a very um, nice, cozy, warm, fuzzy setting and to have the mystery leave you with warm, fuzzy settings, not foreboding. We want good, heroic, yay, not scary. <laughs> um, if you want more information on how to write a cozy mystery well, I did a whole 35 minute video for the Teen Writers Club. Um, please feel free to look at that as well um, if you want tips on how to write your cozy mystery short story better. All right, now, the reason we're talking about word limits. I did a 6,000 word limit for the summer story contest and my coworkers felt that it was too much to grade in the short amount of time that we had. So I either had to extend the grading period or I had to make the story shorter. Unfortunately, um, I was not able to extend the grading period. So as a result, I have made the word limit shorter. That means that the word limit is 3,000 words. And I know that is so small. It is so hard to work with that. But it's what I have. Um, as a result, today we're talking about how to cut down on words while still keeping the meat of the story good and you're not just rushing through things. All right, first thing that you're going to want to avoid is filler words. Your classics, you know, almost, kind of, sort of, maybe, you know, the hedge words. It either is or it isn't. And I know sometimes that you need some hedge words, but try to avoid them as much as possible. Writers tend to use a lot of hedge words. It seems like it might be. And even though you need those every once in a while, you don't need them for often, as much as, pe as often as people use them. Writers use them far too often. <laughs> too many words in the brain trying to get out at once. Um, there are also a bunch of other filler words. I would highly recommend looking up um, filler words to avoid in writing and there are tons of lists out there of like a thousand words and yes could I give them to you right now absolutely but I'm not going to just because it's so easy to Google <laughs> um, so if you're looking to cut down on word count the first thing I'd say to do is Google typical filler words in writing and how and ones that you should avoid specifically and then start doing control F to and just fill in that find bar. And if you find them, reevaluate if you need them or not. For example, me. I use the word that a lot in my writing. I realize it can be cut a lot. In fact, to the point where I go back often to my stories and I snip out like half of my that's because of the fact that I use them far too often. <laughs> it is my, um, my dream filler word, I guess, <laughs> or my nightmare filler word, <laughs> because it's not a good thing. Um, but the point being, with filler words, you want to make sure, sorry, there we go, you want to make sure that you're avoiding them as much as possible, especially if you have a word limit, because that is just going to make it harder. You do not want to have to make your word limit any harder on yourself than you already have, than it already is. Um, <laughs> or that you already have, if you've picked, like, something crazy to try, and you need to try to pack it all in. Um, the next thing that you're going to want to do is avoid info dumping. 
Um, info dumping is when you say this happened, then that happened, then this happened, then this happened, then that happened, then this happened, then this happened, then that happened, and you're basically just giving them a textbook just bleh of information. That's not good. That actually is a sign that this probably shouldn't be a short story. This should be a novel. If you're info dumping too much, it is going to get way too overwhelming for the reader, and it is going to waste your word limit. All right. Next, this is a part of avoiding info dumping. Make sure you show, don't tell. A lot of times the, the reason you info dump is because you feel you have to tell them all this information. But you can show this information and actually have it condense a lot more. For example, you could tell someone she has blonde hair and blue eyes. Or you could say her blue eyes and blonde hair glittered in the sunlight. Now you've added a setting and yet you've condensed the amount of words. So instead of saying standing in the sunlight, which is far more words, you've condensed it all down. You even added a setting to it. You added action to it. It feels more natural. That um, showing, even though it feels like it's gonna add more words, actually, if you do showing properly, it will actually reduce the amount of words that you have, especially if you're trying to say like, here's the setting, here's the what she looks like, here's the, here's the, here's the, here's the, that's a little sign that you might be telling. However, if you're showing, you can generally condense setting details and character details into one sentence. That makes it so that you have far less that you're needing to work with. All right, next, only reveal what is relevant. If it is not relevant to your story, but just a cool fact about your character, delete it. It doesn't need to be there. It is wasting your word count. Um, if, for example, if she scraped her knee when she was six and that's when she learned she wanted to become a doctor, if that is not relevant to the plot, scrap it. I'm sorry. It's cool and all, but yeah, that's for novels, not short stories, and especially not for ones with word limits. Um, and I hate to sound harsh, I don't mean to sound harsh, but you want to only reveal what's relevant. If it's not relevant to the story, then it's just filler, and it's not going to help you um, be able to have as much the um, freedom as you want with that word count. Next thing that you want to keep in mind is start with the inciting incident. A lot of people are like, oh, I have to build up to the inciting incident, or I have to make sure they know their backstory first, not just right out of the gate, especially with cozy mysteries. Cozy mysteries, you want to immediately nail that inciting incident and just keep plowing through. Um, you also want to make sure that you have a simple premise. Um, and I know that's hard with a cozy mystery, obviously, because it's a mystery. However, you can have a simple premise for a cozy mystery. For example, um, this special recipe got stolen from this lady and it is worth so much money because it's what her company's based on. That's a simple promise. Get the recipe back. Right? It's not it's nothing intense and crazy, but it's important, right? Or a simple premise of this person has murdered one person. Let's solve that murder. That's a simple premise. It becomes complicated when you start doing things like serial killers and multiple bank heists and that's that's not cozy mystery. That's regular mystery and it's even harder to do in short stories with complex events. Is it possible? Yes, but with a word count that you've been given, I would say keep your premise simple. Keep your premise point A, point B. Shouldn't be a dozen and a half things in between point A and point B. Should there be red herrings and interesting clues? Absolutely, 100%. But I would say maybe you only do three red herrings. I wouldn't say do like 27 different red herrings they have to solve. That's too many for a short story. Three is pretty good. Um, and if you're doing another genre of short story, a simple premise is even more important. For example, a love story, instead of doing, here's them when they're 10 all the way till they're 20 for a short story that's 3,000 words, bad idea. However, if you want to do a simple premise of he is going to propose to her and everything's going wrong and he's trying to propose to her in spite of everything going wrong, that's a simple premise. That makes it so that with 3,000 words, that is easily doable. All right, the next thing you're going to want to take into a, account is obvious goals. Now, this is similar to a simple premise, but not quite the same. With a simple premise, you can still have some complexity to it. However, you want to make sure with a short story, and especially with a, an intense word limit like this, that you have an obvious goal. Their goal is do X. And sure, complications might come in the way, but 
that their goal is always the same. Their goal does not change throughout the story. If you're changing goals mid-story, that is going to get too complex and need more word count. All right, next thing you're gonna to wanna to take into mind, um, take into account or on your mind, uh, <laughs> mixing my metaphors, is to avoid backstory dumping. As I said before, with only revealing what is relevant, if your backstory is relevant to the character, then do maybe a tiny bit of revealing. But I wouldn't say tell us everything from the time they were 10. Make sure that you keep it simple, keep it on, on track, um, and if you are going to do any backstory things where you tell us everything from the time they were 10, it, make sure that it's relevant and make sure that you don't go too crazy with it. Because again, this is a form of info dumping. With your backstory, you want to make sure that you are showing rather than telling. So make sure to follow the previous principles and your backstory might actually be okay. But you got to make sure you avoid backstory dumping where you just dump a whole bunch of facts about their backstory. All right, the next thing is make sure to go back over your work and look for what's called purple prose. Now, purple prose is when it is far too detailed and has too many details that are just unnecessary. For example, is it necessary that we say the, um, I'm just gonna try to come up with something on the spot. <laughs> the sky is blue and smooth and creamy and silky and snowy and too many details. Keep it succinct. Make sure that you say the most important things, and if you are going to keep it poetic, maybe use one metaphor or one simile. Don't use a ton. I would say, for example, the sky is blue with a hint of snow on the horizon. You know, that's still poetic, but it's not so many details all at once that it's weighing down your word count and weighing down your story, ultimately. Purple prose is something that a lot of writers struggle with, including me because of the fact that even though as an editor I know it's bad, as a writer I can't help myself, a lot of people can't, um, because of the fact that it feels good, right? You're like, oh, this is so pretty. And yes, you want some of those sentences. You don't want your sentences to be boring. But at the same time, if you make them too elaborate, then it's more confusing than it is beneficial to the story. That's how you can identify purple prose. If your reader is going, I'm confused here, or there's too many details for me to keep track of, that's a good way to know that is purple prose and it needs to be condensed. Not necessarily gotten rid of, but condensed into a simpler format. All right, last thing you wanna look out for, and yes, there are more things, but I just decided to go over 10 today, is go back over your work and condense scenes. So we talked about condensing sentences, now we're gonna talk about how to condense whole scenes. For example, you might have a love story and in your love story you know that they're going to confess their love to each other well you may have originally planned to have two love confession scenes right and be like he confesses it but then he gets interrupted or something like that i would say maybe condense that into one scene instead of being like a scene and then wait three pages and then another scene i would say Maybe he tries to do it and then he's interrupted. And then as soon as he, um, the interruption's finished, whatever it is, you know, someone says hi, whatever. She, um, maybe the girl or guy turns to them and says, so what were you gonna say? And then they have a second chance. You've condensed that scene. Instead of making it a scene and then time in between in another scene, you've made it so that it's all one. It makes it so you can use less word count and it actually ultimately feels more interesting because it's more succinct. Um, now, do you have to do this all the time? Absolutely not. But with short stories, especially with short stories with word limits, this is important to note that scenes can be condensed and especially if they have a similar theme and a similar purpose, they can be condensed down into one. All right, thank you so much for watching. I hope that you are all having a great week, and I hope that things go well for you. Bye!